welcome to Science Snippets for 2015, our new venue, quite exciting. Um, so we've got three great speakers for you today, uh, two Jennifers and a Fabio. So um, I'll start by introducing our first speaker. Jennifer Flegg is a recent addition to Monash, completing her PhD in 2009 at the Queensland University of Technology, focusing on mathematical modelling of chronic wound healing. Following her PhD, Jen moved to the UK to work at the University of Oxford, developing mathematical models for the spread of resistance to anti-malarials. And she continues as an honorary visiting research fellow at Oxford. Last year, year she returned to Australia, joining us as a lecturer in the School of Mathematics to continue her research, modeling wound healing, tumor growth, and epidemiology. As part of the new Monash Academy for across and interdisciplinary mathematical applications. Outside mathematics, Jen enjoys netball, she loves animals, and she's waiting impatiently for the next Game of Thrones book. <laughs> Please welcome Jen. Uh, well, thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about the healing power of mathematics. Um, so one of the things that I research here at Monash is when you, you fall over and you injure yourself, um, can mathematics be used to describe the process that your body goes through to repair that wound? And more, um, the thing that I'm most interested in is what if your wound doesn't heal? Can mathematics be used to suggest treatments that could be used to stimulate the healing process in your otherwise non-healing wound? So before we create a mathematical model of the wound healing process, we first have to understand some biology of wound healing. Um, so the biology of wound healing is really quite complicated. It involves the interaction between different cells, chemicals and fibres, but it is tightly regulated. So the wound healing process goes through four stages, um, and I'll describe these briefly here. So when you first injure yourself and you, um, you injure the epidermis and the dermis down to some blood vessels, the first thing that will happen is you'll start to bleed. Uh, so the priority of the first phase of healing is for your body to control that blood loss. So it creates a blood clot in the wound to prevent any further leakage from the capillaries. The second phase, of, uh, second phase of healing is called inflammation. So during the inflammation stage of healing, inflammatory cells from your circulatory system, they come into the wound site to take care of any bacteria or foreign particles that are inside the blood clot. And they also consume the blood clot itself in preparation for a new tissue to be laid down. As they're doing this, the macrophages or the inflammatory cells are producing a lot of chemical stimulants which regulate the next phase of the healing process. So that leads to the third phase of healing, which is proliferation. So in the proliferative phase of healing, the chemical stimulants that were released in the inflammatory stage um, cause fibroblasts to migrate into the wound site and to undergo rapid proliferation. And the point of this is that fibroblasts, once they've um, multiplied up in numbers, produce collagen, and collagen is a major component of your skin. So the fibroblasts essentially replace the uh, blood clot with a new tissue that um, cells can continue to migrate on. And this collagen matrix, or extracellular matrix, is what new blood vessels will grow on into the wound site. And that's an important process, because without new blood vessels, you can't supply oxygen to your wound. And without oxygen, your wound won't heal. The last phase of healing is when the blood clot's been completely removed. The new collagen matrix that's been laid down has to be remodeled and sort of restructured to increase the tensile strength of the new tissue. Okay, so that's some biology of the wound healing process. How can mathematics help? So if you want to do a clinical trial into a wound healing process or how a treatment affects wound healing, that's going to be very expensive. It's going to be difficult to organize and it's difficult to get ethical approval for, and it's also invasive for patients. So a mathematical model developed of the wound healing process can provide an alternative framework to investigate wound healing without needing to conduct a clinical trial. It doesn't replace a clinical trial, it just complements existing clinical work. And once you've got your mathematical model developed, it's relatively easy to start playing with the different processes within your mathematical model to find out which processes greatly affect the outcome of healing. So is it that um, a certain cell, if that proliferates more, that can stimulate healing, or is it migration of cells? And in this way, you can suggest ways that clinical management of wounds could be improved. And this is important for um, a particular type of wounds called non-healing wounds. So if your wound doesn't go through those four phases that I described before, or if it does go through those phases but just not quick enough, then your, um, 
that wound is labelled as a non-healing or a chronic wound. And these are quite a big problem in Australia. They affect around 3% of those aged over 60, and they cost a lot of money for the government to treat. And um, the therapy that I'm most interested in, in terms of the mathematical modelling, is hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Um, so that's when a patient sits inside a chamber, they breathe in 100% oxygen, and it's at an elevated pressure level. Okay, so the mathematical modelling process um, generally looks a little bit like this. So there's four major steps. So we start with our real world problem, which in my case is wound healing. And the first thing I have to do is I have to simplify that. The biology is just way too complicated to include it all. So I have to make simplifying assumptions of what is crucial to include in the model and what can be ignored. Once I've done that, I arrive at what we call a working model, which then has to be represented into <coughs> mathematical equations. Once you have your mathematical equations, these have to be solved, either using computational or analytic approaches. And then you get the results of your model. So your model results can be visualized in some way. Once you have those results, these have to be self-consistent with the original problem that you're modeling. So if your model results are not consistent with experimental or clinical observations, then there was something wrong in your simplifying assumptions, and they have to be changed. And so sometimes several iterations of the entire process would be needed before you get something that you're happy with. Okay, so to outline some of the simplifying assumptions that I've made in order to model the treatment of a non-healing wound with hyperbaric oxygen is firstly to consider the wound to be just one-dimensional. So I'm only considering that the wound has an edge and it has a center and that there's healing from the wound edge into the wound center. The second simplification is that I'm only looking at the six species that are up on this in this figure. So I'm only considering a chemo attractant, so So the chemoattractant um, is produced by the macrophages. That chemoattractant brings in the fibroblasts. Those fibroblasts lay down a new extracellular matrix. That extracellular matrix allows new blood vessels to grow into the wound, and the new blood vessels supply oxygen, which is needed to <coughs> promote proliferation. So these are the six species that um, I've decided are absolutely essential to include in the model. I then have to relate these species somehow. So for instance, I know that in order for fibroblasts to proliferate, they need oxygen to do that. So there's a direct dependence of fibroblast proliferation on the oxygen concentration. And in that way, we build up the dependency of one species on another. So once I've got my set of six species that have to be included in the model, and I've decided how they interact with each other, I need to write down some mathematical equations. And so to do that, I use a principle called mass balance, or conservation of mass. So I'm just looking at an elemental volume V inside the wound domain, and I'm thinking about how does the mass of each of the species change within that volume. And so there are, generally speaking, three ways it could change. You could have random motion, or Brownian motion. So there could be a random motion in from the left or out from the right. There could also be directed motion. So for example, fibroblasts actively migrate towards um, higher levels of a chemical concentration. So that's not random motion, that's directed motion. And lastly, there can be uh, interactions between different species. So two species can come close together, they can interact and they can form a third species. Um, so just as an example, down the bottom, this is the governing equation for the oxygen concentration. So oxygen is just assumed to diffuse linearly through the one-dimensional wound space. It's consumed by the healing tissue. It's removed by the blood vessels, but it's also supplied by the blood vessels as well. And the last term down the bottom here, so this alpha F of T, that represents the increase in oxygen supply that you get by getting treated with hyperbaric oxygen. So alpha is a parameter, which is the increase in supply, and F of T is just a switch function. So it's one if you're in the therapy, and it's zero if you're outside the therapy. Okay, so in that way, we build up one equation for each of our species, so we end up with a six species partial differential equation model, and that has to be solved numerically. So here are some numerical results for that uh, six species mathematical model. So the first thing is a chronic wound. So in, in dark blue, you can see a non-healing wound for a period of five weeks. So there's no reduction in the proportion of wound area um, over that five week period. If we then treat that chronic wound with hyperbaric oxygen, that's in the red line. So it's, it's underneath the, uh, the light blue line for the first two weeks. And then you can see healing of the wound after four weeks. So by treating that patient who has this chronic wound with hyperbaric oxygen once per day, we can stimulate that chronic wound to heal. 
If we stop uh, the therapy at two weeks in the light blue line, you can see that you get no improved um, progression of healing after two weeks. And just for comparison, I've also put in a normal wound simulation in the black line and a pink line, which is the normal wound treated with half cryo oxygen. Uh, so the point of that is that if you treat a chronic wound, so the, the blue line, if you treat it and you get the red line, you don't actually get faster than normal healing, which is the black line. And that's a clinically observed um, fact. Um, so I'll leave it there, but hopefully I have showed you that mathematics has some healing power. Thank you.